eventually, like in, you know, probably 2007, you know, we were coming to a place where all of a sudden, like, you know, we were like overbooked, like for our space, our 12,000 square feet. And, and it was hard to like get the work out, right? And all of a sudden, and I'm, I'm, I'm the head programmer, so I'm having to actually, you know, do all the quoting myself and like pages, like keep coming over, pages keep coming over, pages keep coming over. And it's like, quote this, quote this, quote this. Like we need you to do all these parts and we need all this happening. And, you know, it comes to a place where all of a sudden, you know, you know, it's like, I'm not spending all that time with Gina, Gina anymore, right? Like I'm, I'm working and working and working, right? And, and it's taking a toll on my family and stuff. And, you know, and I just, I was just like, man, something's got to change, you know? And even just doing the quotes, it was just like difficult and stuff. And I, all of a sudden I just come up with a plan. I think to myself, you know what? Like I'm done. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, if you think about business, like right now they're happy with us and we're growing and, and they're, they're 80% of our business, but like, how do I actually sink my roots into them? Like, how do I sink my roots into them so that they can't separate from me, right? So business, like business, how do I sink my roots into that company and make it so like, like it gives me security? Right. And how do I solve their problems in a way that they would never want to get rid of us? Right. So I come up with a plan and I ask, I ask them to actually, uh, have a boardroom meeting with all the top guys and stuff. So I go down, I go down with uh, one of my employees and, and we sit down and I do a, a proposal and I basically show them all the parts that we're doing and basically how much everything's costing. And we're already giving them a big discount as far as what it used to cost, right? So, you know, a lot of that information was shared with me. So we just, we had this talk. And basically I came to a place and I was like, look, I'm spending so much time quoting. You guys are shoving all of this stuff at me. Like I need to be on the machines program. I need to be focused over here. So this is what I propose. You guys take all the jobs that other people are doing that you feel that you want me to do. And then I will quote those jobs or where I actually do those jobs. But the deal was they would take out material costs and outside processing. And then what's left is the labor cost. And then what they pay to other vendors, then they would drop that in half and, and at, 50% of what they currently paid, that's what they would pay me. So they would save labor, they'd save 50%. It doesn't sound like a lot, right? But by this time, I've got like 14 CNC machines, right? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I run three shifts and I actually have all the machines running, so I don't have to go look for work and I'm running 40 hours and then 40 hours and I stack them. So I'm running 80 hours a week, Monday through Thursday. Then I can actually run 12s on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we can just make it happen. So 113 hours a week plus, you know, overtime. And if I'm just, if all my machines are making this amount of money and it's labor and I have no cost in material, no cost in outside processing, then I win. Like it's just gold, right? And, and basically they signed off on it and they said, okay, perfect. And guess what? I just got all of this work. I didn't quote any of it. And I made on average a 40% profit across the board, across the board. Like we were just killing it. Right. And by now I got like 30, 30 guys working for me and we're just cranking through it and, and things are just rolling. And all of a sudden they call me down for a meeting. All the leaders and stuff tell me like, look, we actually have secured these contracts out to 2017. And when you came in, you basically started cranking so many of the parts on this ROV. You're basically doing 80% of the machine work on this part. And we, we were doing 12 a year, 
Then we went up to 24 a year. Now we need, now we're at 36, like we need to do 48. We need to get up to 72. And basically we're doing all of this work out to 2017. And they're basically telling me like, look, like we have all our eggs in one basket with you. Like you're doing 80% of the parts. And if you fail, then we're not gonna be able to assemble and actually deliver these parts. So like you need to do something to reassure us. All right. And, and me like, you know, look where I came from. I went from borrowing $5, you know, and building my company and making a million, now making millions with a capital S, you know, and all of a sudden an opportunity is presenting itself. And like, I'm like half price of everyone. They love me. And I'm so confident and I'm just like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's do this in the biggest way. So I drive away from the shilling and I go up to the airport in Auburn and I see this nice building and stuff. And I go talk to the landlord and I figure out how much it would cost. And it's 35,000 square feet, like just massive. By now we're at like 14,000 square feet. I'm bulging. I can't get anything done. And I just, I need more space. And I'm like, we got a contract. We got ships going out to 2017. It's only 2007. We're gonna make this happen. It's gonna be amazing. Like, let's just go. So I designed this crazy facility. I go down, I talk to Tyler and Rick and everybody and I tell them what my, my strategy is. And I'm like, look, this is what we're gonna do and we're gonna build this shop, it's gonna be incredible. And they sign off on it and they're like, uh, we're bringing in bigger machines and more horsepower. We had some, you know, big machines already, but I just was like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring in robotics. We ended up getting like a UP6 Moto Man and different things. But anyway, worked with my brother-in-law. He does tile, so picked out beautiful tile and tiled the floor and the offices and stuff. You know, talked to Bill. Some of you guys from Subway Machine Tool will know that one of the greatest service guys, Bill, I'm not gonna say his last name, but you know, he actually did the granite countertops for me and we painted. I was in a restaurant on uh, Hawks over in uh, Granite Bay and I was just like, oh, what's that color? And they're like silver sage. And I'm like, oh man, silver sage. Like, I'm gonna go do it. And we painted it and we just, and we ran our electrical and we brought in the machines and built it up. 20 CNC machines just stacked like, boom, made everything so perfect. Went to Arizona and had pallets of water labeled where it was like American badass. Back then it was Titan Engineering, like, you know, Titan Engineering, you know, American manufacturing, boom, boom. And like, like it was a beautiful shop. And people, you guys, you guys, people can talk and say what they want, but everybody around knows it. And all these tooling guys lived it with me. People would come in and they'd be like, hey, Titan, they come with somebody like, give them water. And then they'd be like, oh, American badass water. And oh, that's awesome. And they would go and talk about it. They would look at the shop and they're like, where'd you come from? Like, wait, this isn't, there's no papers around. This is granite. This is saltwater reef tanks. You know, oh, Titan's office, there's speakers put into the wall. Like, this is crazy. I've never seen a machine shop like this, you know? And you're saving your customers money and you can still afford this? Like, what is going on here? You know, signs on the wall saying, you know, if you don't take care of your customers, somebody else will. Like service oriented, like everybody who came into my shop, I wanted them to have a crazy experience. I wanted them to walk in my shop and understand that, that they were standing in excellence and they would just blow their minds and we were running everything so fast and just getting after it, right? Like what we were doing, people just weren't doing it at that time, right? 